Hey folks, this is Matt once again, and welcome back to another review. I know, this time of a actual newer movie. The first person perspective action sci-fi film, originally called Hardcore, but Hardcore Henry. And right off the bat, I love this movie. <laughs> When this film comes out on Blu-ray, I want to get it as soon as possible. I, I loved it. I to the point. I would love to see it again right now. I really, really would. And what's sad about this film is, yeah, I love the trailer, and I'm like, you know what? What's Looking at my movie theater, and I'm like, okay, it's only been out a week. Second week comes by. Oh, 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. are the only showings. And this is the second week it's out. So that really shows you how piss poor this film is doing. It debuted at number 5. I think now it's like number 10 or 11. And... The audience score, cinema score, is a C plus, and critics didn't care for it. Which, if you like the trailer, that's the movie. It's a ninety-minute movie, and it's definitely R-rated. It's extremely fast-paced. It's not pretentious. It knows what it is. It absolutely knows what kind of film it is. It's to the point. It's fun. It's entertaining. It's not the first first person perspective you know, POV movie because there were movies like there was one I reviewed I believe called Hotel Inferno which I love the idea of in Hotel Inferno it's just the acting wasn't the best especially the person you were seeing through the eyes of and it had a shitty ending which this film does not it avoided those problems it has a damn <laughs> crazy ass ending and the lead doesn't talk, which I'm sure some people would have a problem, but I would not be surprised that they, the reason they did that was because, for example, in certain video games, they don't have a character talk, especially if it's a first person, because that way you put your own voice, your own feelings into it. But if someone talks, it automatically it's them, not you. That's not always the case, but I've heard that before in certain people. So I, I can understand that. I'm like, I prefer that than getting a shitty actor. And if you don't want it spoiled, I'll warn you when I'm getting the spoilers. I'm going to go in depth on this because no one else is going to see this film, unfortunately. Who knows? It might not even be in theaters by the time you see this video, but. I'm sure people will complain about the plot because it's simplistic. The there's no big character arcs. There's no pretentious. Oh, I want. Well, it's not pretentious, but there's no big story development. No, if you want to see a first-person video game for 90 minutes with balls to the wall action and violence and really incredible stunt work and for the budget they had I, at most I heard it was 10 million at most it could be lower than that but the most I heard was 10 million dollars and man I've seen 80 million dollar movies that look fucking cheaper than this movie this film doesn't this film has a lot of bane for your buck. Shalto Copley's in it, and he's a very interesting character. I'll say that. Uh, the humor made me chuckle at times. The it's a f with someone who's a cyborg, and this is so an idea I've always said. You have these found footage movies. Make a movie that you just take away the camera and just see from the guy's perspective. That way you don't have to worry about the camera shutting down. Why don't they drop the camera? This and that, that and this. 
take that sequence in Doom, make that into a new movie. And when I watch this, I'm like, I would love to see a series of movies like this. You want to reboot Doom? Get these guys to do it and reboot Doom. If they did do this for $10 million, what do you think you could do with a $50 million budget? It's not going to happen because this film fucking bombed. It pisses me off. Ilya Naishholer. I know one of the producers is Timor, the guy who did Wanted, but he didn't write or direct it. The writer-director is Ilya Nashula. I probably said the name wrong. And he was part of a Russian indie rock band called Biting Elbows. And he's the front man. And he directed some music videos which went viral because they had the first person perspective. So, which is how he got the job. He directed some of the music videos his band did, and hey, do this. And again, yeah, very low budget. I wish they would do this for a Doom movie. I like the Doom movie, but fun. Reboot that since you're doing so many damn reboots, Hollywood. But again, yeah, this film bombed. Another one I thought of Crank 3. Like, as this guy's doing all this crazy shit and how crazy the Crank films are, I'm like, I wish this was Crank. Imagine this was Crank 3 with Jason Statham. You just have his voice and this craziness. I mean, considering how indestructible Jason Statham is in those movies, this was. If you do a few edits and put Jason Statham's voice, this could be Crank 3. That'd be pretty fucking cool. If the directors of Crank 1 and 2 ever get funding and they, they do shit with their video, their cameras. You want to make Crank 3? Here you go. Look at this movie. And I love Crank 1 and 2. It had that energy of Crank 1 and 2. That crazy lunatic energy to it. And the plot's very simple. It's a, a guy wakes up and he's part cyborg and he's got an arm and a leg fitted onto him. Shit hits the fan. He has to go rescue this woman. His wife. And then a lot of shit happens. Grenade fun, shotgun fun, fist fun, machine gun fun, pistol fun, double barrel pistol fun, Incre again, incredible stunt work, fun soundtrack. And I gotta go more into spoilers, so starting right now so if you can somehow find this if you like the trailer if you please try to find a way to see it if you can which I would not be surprised if you can't the beginning was interesting because we see this character when he was a kid a little flashback and I'm like is that fucking Tim Roth is this guy's father and it is and that comes into play at the end of the film because Tim Roth's saying, you know what, are you a pussy? You know, like, why do you say that? You find out at the end why he says that, which is, uh, I didn't mind, actually. And the end credits, it was kind of like, ooh, because, the, I'm not, I mean, the opening credits, because the opening credits is this montage of people getting fucked up, like a knife going in here and then coming out here. And someone gets shot up close. And it's just like, hey, you know, we don't have some violence. Let's let you get used to it at first. And so Henry wakes up, and from his point of view, he's in this, seems like the pink stuff from the Matrix in one of those cryo tubes. And this woman that's there, we get the idea that maybe she's his wife has amnesia the guy has amnesia they fit him with an arm and a leg and again this movie is incredibly fast paced incredibly fast paced it's with the opening credits and such and a little bit of, I mean maybe 10 minutes the baddies are in and the bad guy I'm not sure what accent he has sometimes when I looked at him he looked like Kurt Cobain to me he kind of looked like an evil like European Kurt Cobain 
And the guy also has telepathy powers. As she lifts a guy while he's playing with the switchblade and just stabs the guy. And one of these to another, there's an escape, and kind of what you see in the trailer where the, the lead is trying to escape and almost falls off, and you realize they're now on the ground, they're on a plane. And they get in this tube and they go from the plane all the way to Earth. I mean, all the way to the ground. And again, for such a low budget, I thought it looked pretty damn good. I'm like, wow, that's really cool. And they get to the ground, and there's these mercs that fuck with him, and you know, he's, he's trying to figure out what's going on. They even mention at the beginning, the woman mentions that he can't talk, which again, some people probably have a problem with that, but it, it didn't. It didn't bother me. I kind of understood what they were going for with that. Um, I would not have minded if it was like a Jason Statham or fucking or Carl Urban or even anybody. Uh, well, not anybody, but you know, there's probably a few lists, but I kind of get what they were going for with that. Uh, but he's that's where you get the scene where he falls and he lands on a car and stabs and shoots some guys chasing after him. That's where he meets Charlotte Copley. And Charlotte Copley is a really interesting character because jumping ahead, you realize he keeps seeing Charlotte Copley. And then when he sees him, he tries to help him out. And then he dies. And then a lot of times he dies and he immediately gets a phone call. And his character is named Jimmy. Like All these people are named Jimmy. And like one guy is very clean cut guy, one guy, one Jimmy is a hippie, one Jimmy is a bum who gets burned alive, one is a, a colonel from World War II type of, uh, one guy is in camouflage, one guy is a horny guy who's sniffing coke off tits. Like all these different Shelter Copley performances and jumping ahead. Because I'm like, what the hell's going on? It kind of made me laugh. Like each, as he kept dying, it kind of became like the South Park, you know, Kenny. How they kept killing him. And you realize that it's kind of Sheldon Copley's character. Later on in the film, you find out the bad actually crippled him. Crippled his spine. And he's kind of, kind of like Mantis. Kind of like he's in a wheelchair. And he has these clones, these avatars. And uh, he can inhabit one clone, and then switch to another one, then switch to another one, sort of putting his subconscious into these clones, these avatars. Uh, which I thought that was pretty interesting. And it was, I thought Shelter Copley had a lot of fun. Um, my favorite was probably either the hippie or the, the World War II colonel guy. Uh, but. When he meets the first Jimmy, Sean Copley, it's like, oh yeah, your heart needs recharge, which made me think of Crank uh, with Jason Statham. Or actually even Crank 2, I should say. And then immediately, fucking Sean Copley gets shot in the head. You're like, what? Uh, he runs, he fights some cops, shoots one, and then there's another Jimmy, a bum. And this Jimmy's talking about, oh yeah, I did to this guy, and you need a new heart, you don't tear his heart out, you don't eat it. Nah, I'm kidding. I'm just fucking kidding. You don't eat as hard. You just do this. <laughs> so, if Shadow Copley, you can tell us have a lot of fun with this role. And then the flamethrower guy comes out and kills the bum, and he, the lead guy jumps out of the bus and has to fight, uh, uh, gets away. This one guy fucked with him, just headbutts him, <laughs> takes his shirt. He gets to this hotel where this guy that he needs the thing for his heart at. And, you know, he's fucked up guards in the hotel. Get into this gunfight, does a Geronimo right off with a bungee, did this foot chase, becomes like a parkour scene. And then, like, there's this bridge, and then there's this escalator. He's throwing a bow at the guy and gets the guy. He's talking to him, and all of a sudden, boom, just the top half of the guy's head blows off. Kind of like the Peter Jackson's bad taste. And, like, oh shit, like, I didn't see that coming. Oh shit, and like, pretty good effect. It pulls him off, pulls off the heart, takes it with him, gets his club that another Jimmy's at. A club with a lot of titties, a lot of women with titties. 
and ass, and even the that song "My Girl" for the I think the Temptations. Is it? You say, "My girl, my girl," which I'm like, I didn't expect that song. And then there's a, another Jimmy, another Shadow Copley, gets sniffing cold off tits, and I'm like, is he? I, you know, he's like, are you Miguel Ferrar for Global Cop? And uh, then another Jimmy guy, more like nerdy guy, fixes his heart up. And then these bad guys come into the club, and he gets the lead gets two barrel guns, doo -doo 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 -doo, shooting, a lot of shooting. And then the bad guy gets him telepathically and throws him, you know, into this parking garage. And that's where you meet the next Johnny, the hippie. Uh, if, uh, and before I go ahead, I have two little qualms with the flick. Uh, one, it, it does this weird thing, like it's all from the person's point of view, but you tell there are edits, and I'm guessing they did that because if it was in real time, he has to get from point A to point B, how do you do that in a specific amount of time? But then it's like, well, it's from his eyes, but maybe you can justify it because he is a cyborg, so... Or, because it, it's just a fucking movie, so don't worry about it. But it's one of those things that you watch it, it's from his point of view, but there's certain times there's an edit. And I'm like, okay, if it was a footage that someone took and edited it, that's one thing, but it's a little nitpick, but it's one I needed to mention. And uh, another one, which you know, I'm going to jump ahead and, of course, spoil, like, of course, this is a spoiler-filled video. Uh, the bad guys his uh his plan it's kind of stupid <laughs> where pretty much you find out at the end that the woman he's chasing is a two-time bitch it is actually the bad guy's wife and the bet I guess for I understand the bad guy because there are certain times I'm like wait a minute if he wants the bad guy I mean if the bad guy wants this guy the good guy there are a couple times where he could just take the guy back and do whatever. But he doesn't. Like there's a moment where he crashes the lead guy with a baseball bat. And then the bad guy is some henchman trying to bury him. I'm like, when you find out the bad guy's playing that, he's recording the lead guy's memories to put in these super soldiers. And that, you know, normally super soldiers couldn't do anything, but they needed motivation. So a motivation of, like, you you have a wife that you need to save and putting these memories and motivations into these other super soldiers to make them work for him. But I'm like, still, aren't there ways bad, Mr. Bad Guy, Mr. Co you know, Kurt Cobain want to be uh, that you could just grab them and take them with you after you knock them out? I mean, you're definitely wasting a lot of your own henchmen on this. So the bad guy seems pretty stupid. I mean, the whole plan, the villain's plan seems pretty stupid. So those are the two qualms I have with the film. Of course, with the bad guys, see, I mean, there are about 20 James Bond films, so you just say the same thing. And there's a bunch of other action films that I love that you can say the same thing as well. Like, why do they tie the hero up when they could just shoot him in the head? Or why you have a talking villain, talking, give an old plot. I mean, there are 50 movies that have done that, so. Uh, I could forgive it because I was having a lot of fun. I was definitely having a ball with the movie. Uh, for example, when the hippie Shoto Copley... Um, and these two women on motorcycles get the lead guy to this convoy, armored convoy that the lead guy's wife, here we're supposed to think it's his wife, are trying to get to her. And the guy in the sidecar, the lead has a fucking minigun, just shooting up the fucking vehicles, uh, Gets on top, puts a grenade in the tr truck that blows up and helps him to this motorcycle. Gets on this other car being dragged. This car, sorry, this car tries to ram him. He gets underneath in order to avoid it. Uh, 
uh, fuck up bad guys left and right. I'm not going to go 100% in death because even with spoilers, I don't want to give everything away. But, you know, fucking get someone in the gut and throws a knife into someone's eye. And he gets to his woman. And then, again, he gets knocked out by the bad guy, wakes up in the woods, Shelter Copley helps him out. And then immediately gets shot by a tank. Again, that's sort of this common thing where each Shelter Copley dies in some. Uh, Usually some horrible way. But he actually chases after the tank. It gets on the tank and fucks up the people in the tank. Uh, that's where you get the scene where people are bunging off the helicopter. He's shooting them. Get in the helicopter. They cut the rope. He does a skydive down. I'm like, how the hell do they get some of these shots? Some of these shots are just... I know they use the camera, the, the GoPro camera, but still some of these are really dangerous stunt scenes. I'm like, I'm sure some effects had to be used, and if not, I mean, some really risky stunt work, which I definitely applaud. And there's some fun humor, like he finds a horse, and he tries to ride the horse, and the music is having this, uh, like, this theme, this... Uh, like Western theme, like he's gonna be a glory. Like, dun, 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 and then he falls off the horse, and he just says, F "He doesn't say, it, but he, it's like fuck yeah, just keeps going." Um, uh, then he meets up with a camouflage Jimmy. Uh, there's this girl, and the camouflage Jimmy's like, "No, don't worry about it." And again, I this guy doesn't have any. Dialogue, but I like him because of his actions, his motivation, and then even here, there's a innocent woman who's about to be raped, and despite Shelter Trouble, he says, no, 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 she gotta be quiet. The lead guy goes in, fucks up these rapists, and he fucks up a guy's dick, a guy's balls. I think he rips them off, but this rape is... <laughs> I'm like, alright, I mean... That's more than fucking Denzel and Booker Vili did. He sees a girl getting raped, he just walks away. This guy... Even without dialogue, he's like, fuck you, and you know, fucks up a rapist in a way that they should. Fucks up, rips him out. Uh, and that's when you get the bad story. The real Jimmy, the real Shoto Copley, uh, some avatars. Uh, he even does like a little song. Num musical number with his avatars, like each one he's popping up, singing a different lyric of the song. And great, I don't know if you needed that, but I thought Shelter Copley it was kind of, it was definitely interesting and different, and that's what I liked about this film. I know some people don't like it because it's a gimmick movie. I'm like, you know what, bring on the gimmick movies, because we see the same shit all the fucking time. Bring in as many gimmick movies as you can, please. Yes, I would like to see something kind of unique and different, which is why I enjoy this fucking movie. Again, it's not the first. Yeah, it's Hotel Inferno, but I think it was done a much, much better than Hotel Inferno. Just saying. I would love to see a big monster movie from a person's point of view. Maybe the guy fucks up the monster and, you know, driving a car and, you know, the monster's right behind him. You know, jumps when car hits the fucking monster, you know, Godzilla type in the face while he guy lands on a roof. Hell, that could be fucking Hardcore Henry too. Since it's science fiction. But again, this film flops. It was fun. It was over the top. It was a film not to take seriously at all. Uh, finds out that the baddies follow the, the good guy there because it's got the bad guys can see through his eyes. And the lead guy didn't know about that. And the real Jimmy's getting his avatars attack him, but then says, Oh, you need to kill me. You know, I'm in this chair. They don't do this. And then the lead guy slaps him in the face. And then the real Jimmy's like, Fuck you too, but mostly thank you. <laughs> like he needed that. And he did some fun stuff. I mean, like the whole idea with these avatars so he can send some avatars out and fuck up some bad guys and become a, like a suicide bomber. Because the guy's got another avatar. You have a sniping sequence where Lee Guy we see through the scope. That's where he gears up and like the first time I saw footage 
was part of the scene here where uh, this Colonel World War II avatar of Charlton Copley helps him out and that's really like tons of shotgun fun, machine gun fun, and lots of grenade fun uh, from the person's eyes, point of view. They get out of there, some van, vans chase them, blows them up. Like some bits you see in the trailer. And what I like about it is that as the film goes on, each action set piece gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Like the hotel scene is a lot of fun, and then you get to this scene, which is even bigger and a lot more fun. Then you get to the ending, which is insane. He gets to the headquarters. And then you get an idea that the real Jimmy dies. He has a wound on his neck. Whether he actually died or not, I'm not sure. But you get the idea, I guess, that he died. But yeah, I'm not 100% sure. And you find out sort of the bad guys plan that, you know, the memories, we're recording your memories in these super soldiers. And we're going to give them motivation to fight for their woman to save. And... Yo, I'm gonna use this army. It really is a James Bond plot. So, and, and you did it gets to the rooftop of this headquarters, and you know that scene in Matrix Reloaded where Keanu is fighting all the Smiths. Imagine that if it was R-rated and it wasn't CGI. That's this scene. And it's a pretty lengthy scene. And there is an army of super soldiers. And he's fucking them up with his fists. Fucking them up with a, a bar. Even just to a little shed. And there's guns that becomes like a mini. Then there's like a part of that scene that becomes a mini assault on Precinct 13. With a shotgun and machine gun. Um, and then even a little bit of Queen. Having a good time. Having a good time. Da -da 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 Da, 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 da. Like the song that you heard in Shaun of the Dead. That plays, he's fucked up more people, throws one into like a grinder type, and you see blood spray. And then the pretty much it's just the telepathic lead, you know, boss asshole that fucks with him. And then you see the full memory of Tim Roth, his dad saying that I mean, that's where he finds out that the who he thought was his wife actually betrayed him. Is actually the bad guy's wife, and the girl's a straight out bitch. Then that's where he sees the memory of his dad, Tim Ross, saying, "You know, you got blood in your mouth. You know, you gonna sit there and be a pussy, or you gonna stand up, spit it out, and go spill theirs?" Because he said he's got blood in his mouth. You gonna spit it out and go spill theirs? And I like Tim Ross. Like, wow, okay, cool. And that's where he gets. It's, and I love it, because this bad guy... I mean, the bad guy's not the best, I'll admit. But I definitely want his comeuppance. And grabs the bad guy, grabs his hand, and just fucking takes his hand, like, here. Like, imagine one here, and then his other hand here. And takes the bad guy's hand, and just rips it apart. Rips his hand... Rips the bad guy's hand in half. And does, ah! And then throws the good guy back. He's raising all these bodies. And the, and the good guy, like, jumps on these bodies, jumps on the guy. The good guy actually takes his fucking eyeball that has a cable connected, rips it out, puts on across the bad guy's head, squeezes and cuts the, this part of the bad guy's head off. And then the lead guy puts his eye back in. And then takes the top half, jumps on this helicopter where the, the two-timing bitch is at, shows him the head... And then she like shoots at him and says, "Yo, how how could you do this to me?" And I did. I thought that was some fun humor. He put some blood on and he writes, "E Z." That's his answer. Why could you? How could you do this? And he's just like, "Easy," <laughs> in blood. Um, and like she tries to shoot him and he blasts with his hand and ricochets back at her. And then she's falling. She's hanging off the helicopter. And she said something like, Oh, please, Henry, listen to your heart. And he just takes the, the helicopter door and just slams it shut. 
So you probably get the idea that she probably you know got her hand, fingers cut off. And it's just the fact that she said, oh, listen to your heart. And as, if the guy could talk, he said, yo, fuck you. And then credits. <laughs> and that's the way the movie ends. He's in the helicopter and he's, you know, chow. Yeah. I had a ball with this movie. I, I can't wait till this one's on Blu-ray. I really want to see it again as soon as possible. I, I love this film. Again, other than those couple qualms I said, I thought Shadow Copy was a lot of fun. Very wild, crazy characters. It's unapologetic. Unapologetic in its R rating. Tons of action. Each action set piece gets bigger and bigger and bigger. The ending's a load of fun. You definitely get some carnage in there. Uh, the score's pretty decent. The pacing is fast. It's only 90 minutes. And it went by like that. That's why I want to see it again. Um, again, I'll wait till Blu-ray. Uh, but, you know, it went by like a flash. And it's sad because, again, this film bombed. And I would love to see more movies like this. Hell, I would love to see a Ninja Turtles movie like this. Raphael's point of view, fighting Foot Clan, fighting mutants. Man, I, I want to make that movie. Well, I, I don't have the money to make it, and even then I don't have the talent to make it. But, you know, hey, if if any big guys or Ninja Turtle fans and you're rich, you know, go make a movie from that point of view. Please. That'd be nice. You know, you just have, you know, you don't have, That'd be great. You just show some hands and some size and fuck up Foot Clan. There you go. Get some people immune suits, fuck them up too. Get a decent voice actor. Get a voice actor from one of the, you know, first two 90s movies or something. Or, anyway, I'm going, I just, I, this is what I wanted to see. And again, is I'm not going to make it out to be it's perfect. It's not perfect. It's not the be all end all. But again, it gets a C plus from Cinema Score, Critics Gear like a 50%, 51%, and a Bomb Valley. It did not deserve the Bomb Valley. Fucking Transporter Refueled made more money than this. Fucking Transporter 3 made like over 100 million worldwide. And this film, I think it's made maybe 10 million worldwide. And it's already disappearing from theaters. 10 million. Like eight million here. So yeah, it's I definitely would say Dread is better, John Wick is better, you know, Raid Redemption is better. There are there are better action movies than this. But for films I've seen lately, I just, again thoroughly enjoyed it, had fun, had a ball, and it was very entertaining. You know, my kind of movie. Unapologetic. Uh, outlandish, over the top, different, call it gimmick, whatever. I'll take more gimmicks, please. Instead of the same regurgitated bullshit. We got 50 movies like Ouija. We got a dozen comic book movies. I love to see more of these kind of movies. I would love it. But hey, what do I know? So either way, thanks for watching, take care, and we will see you later. Bye-bye.